Many people smoke electronic cigarettes nowadays, but not many know how they actually work. So today we're gonna disassemble one and look at what is inside and how it works from electronics point of view. And trust me, you will be surprised how intelligent this thing is. No more words, let's tear it apart in Guy Ritchie style to look at its main components. By the way, don't forget to subscribe in order to see more videos like that. Now let's have a look at it in details in a more chill way. So meet on the stage disposable 11 bar 600, where 600 is the number of puffs it can provide. On Amazon it costs approximately 9 bucks. It has a 550mAh battery and as I assume the number of puffs is limited by the battery capacity. After around 600 battery just discharges and the control circuit doesn't work anymore. From the outside it has nothing interesting, except that it has two holes. The one you suck air through and another one at the other side to create airflow. The battery inside is a lithium battery with a 3.7V nominal voltage, which powers the control circuit and heats up the coil. The coil itself is a piece of wire wound in a spiral that is located inside the tank. Usually coil is made from cantal, nichrome, nickel or another metals with similar properties. And the tank is just a reservoir with a sponge, saturated with a smoking liquid. So when current flows through the coil, it heats it up, evaporating liquid from the tank. The created vapor then can be inhaled. At the bottom of the device there is a small capsule, which in reality is pretty complex and performs many functions, which you will see later. Also, as you can see, there is no button on the device to turn it on, thus the capsule automatically detects when the user takes a puff to start heating the coil and when the puff stops, turns it off. And as I already said, this is the most complex part of the whole device, and it is very interesting how it works. So the question here is, how it can detect the change of airflow? How this small circuit automatically detects that the user makes a puff? Let's figure it out. From the outside it has a relatively simple structure. It has three wires for connection, and one LED to indicate that the device works. In order to figure out how this piece works, I decided to look under the case. And as you can see, it has a lot of different mechanical pieces, and even one small integrated circuit, which is a little bit unexpected. We're gonna look at that circuit a little bit later. First of all, let's figure out how it detects the change of airflow. Where is the button here, that detects that the user started inhaling? And in reality, there is no conventional button. There is a special type of sensor that detects changes of airflow, which works in the following way. The sensor consists of several parts. PCB with control IC, metallized ring with a membrane, two isolated rings which isolate metallized ring from other parts, metal plate and sensor case. When air flows in this direction, it pushes this piece with a membrane in the direction of printed circuit board. And if you look closer at PCB, you can see that there is a metallized ring or trace so when this metal piece with the membrane is pressed against this metallized ring, the integrated circuit detects that the user puffs. And when pressure equalizes at both sides when user stops inhaling, this piece with the membrane is pushed away from the PCB and contact is looser. And due to the loss of contact between two plates, the IC can determine that user stopped inhaling and the heater should be turned off. However, as I said, this sensor is not a simple button that just joins two metallized contacts together. If we pay attention to this metallized ring, we can see that it is solid from the beginning till the end. It has no gaps. Also, it's connected to only one leg of the IC. Additionally, the metal ring with the membrane is isolated from the case using two plastic rings. So, it already cannot be a simple button, because one piece with the membrane is electrically isolated, and in conventional button, two contacts should be connected. So my guess is the following. It's probably a capacitive type of sensor. So this piece with a membrane, together with metallized ring, create one capacitor plate. Another capacitor plate is a capsule case. So how it works on an example. 
When a metal ring touches PCB, the area of the capacitor plate increases. And as you may know from basic electronics, as a rule, higher plate area leads to a higher capacitance. This capacitance increment is then detected by IC using any known method, and coil heating starts. Then when pressure is equalized at both sides and contact is getting loose, capacitance decreases and again IC detects it and turns off the heating. That is why I said that this circuit in reality is intelligent. It can do a lot of stuff. So eventually the simplified circuit of the device can look like this. Battery, integrated circuit, LED, sensor and heater. So when IC detects that capacitance has changed, it closes the switch inside it, allowing current to flow from the battery to the heating element. And it indicates that heating is on by a LED. There is also one capacitor in parallel to the battery. If you don't know why it is there, just watch this video about bypass caps. So as you can see, the circuit looks really really simple. Several components and that's it. That is because all complex things happen inside this integrated circuit. And the problem is that there is no datasheet for this small IC on the internet. Even though its variations are installed in millions of devices around the world, it has a very poor description. All I found about it is the article of one person who actually used an oscilloscope to look at its working regimes. And in this video I'm gonna show you only the main stuff from the article. However, if you want, you can follow the link in the description in order to read it fully. So at this diagram you can see LED voltage, which is purple, and coil voltage, which is yellow. So at some moment when the inhaling starts, the coil must be heated. A switch inside IC opens, providing a pass for current. And LED indicates that the device works. By the way, the brightness of the LED is regulated linearly, not by a PWM signal. And now the fun starts. This IC, except for a simple coil switching, provides different protection and tests in order to verify that the system is working correctly. For example, IC applies a short test pulse with duration of 200 nanoseconds at the beginning of puff in order to test for a coil short circuit condition. After that, limited current is applied for around 10 milliseconds to be 100% sure there is no short circuit. And only after that it applies full power. The next condition is a light load condition. In such case the output is pulsating. It works in a burst mode. The switch is turned on and off. And LED operates as normally, not showing any errors, which is a little bit strange. Also, when puff is too long, over 10 seconds, IC turns the heater off, cause it detects possible sensor error. Because, you know, maybe parts of the sensor just stuck together for some reason, or something like that. Cause in reality it is really hard to inhale this thing for 10 seconds and more. <coughs> But already in this case, LED indicates error. Additionally, this circuit has overheating protection. When overheating occurs, the output is switched on and off in order to stay in the temperature range. Obviously, in such regime, power that is delivered to the coil is lower. This can happen if the switch is turned on for too long for some reason. For example, several 10 second cycles occur one after another. Also, this circuit has overcurrent protection. If there is no short circuit, but the current is still too high for some reason. So it's gonna turn off the device. Everything mentioned about all the tests and functions is inside this small IC. Thank you micro and nano electronics engineers. It is really crazy how many functions such small ICs can have nowadays. So if you like this video, don't forget to subscribe and see you in the next one. Bye.